Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and in today's lecture, we are talking about what we call arithmetic means. The good news is that we're going to be using the formula that we've already memorized. We're just going to be applying it in a few different ways. And just to define what arithmetic means are, the terms between two given terms of an arithmetic sequence are called arithmetic means. And to kind of give some context to that, we would say the three arithmetic means between 18 and 98 are 38, 58, and 78. Because 18, 38, 58, 78, 98 is an arithmetic sequence. I can see that I'm adding the same common difference each time. If they ever ask us to find a single arithmetic mean between terms, um, all that is is finding the average, okay? So I would just take those two values and add them and divide by two. Number one is asking us to find the four arithmetic means between seven and 37. Okay, so just to kind of give us a picture of what this is asking us for. Okay, we have seven and then I'm trying to find one, two, three, four numbers, and then we have 37. So we know in order to find the next number in an arithmetic sequence, I'm really just adding our common difference. So the key thing we need to do here is find what D is. Okay, so we need to find our common difference. And to do that, we're going to say a sub 1 is 7, and if we look, 37 is our sixth term. So to figure out what this would be, it's the number of terms in between plus 2 because we have our first term and that term. So 4 plus 2 gives us 6. So just to recall, our formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So in this case, I'm going to say 37 equals 7 plus 6 minus 1 times D, because D was the only value we did not know there. So 37 equals 7 plus 5D. 30 equals 5D, which tells me that 6 is my common difference. So in order to find these four numbers, I know I'm going to have to add 6 to the previous term. So I would say 13, 19, 25, 31, and if I added 6 again, I would get 37. So that tells me that these four numbers are the arithmetic means. Number 2, this time is asking us to find 9 values in between. So once again, I know I need to find D. This is going to be our first term, and I know negative 3 is going to be 9 plus 1, 2, which would be the 11th term. So I'm going to use a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to say negative 3 equals negative 18 plus 11 minus 1 times d. Negative 3 equals negative 18 plus 10d. So I get 15 equals 10d, which means 3 over 2, or 1.5, is our common difference. Now, I want to make a note that in this case, it is perfectly okay to write 1.5 instead of 3 over 2 because this is exact. What we will find in this chapter is often I need to keep things in fractional form because it, it would not convert to an exact decimal. So now we need to find what those nine values actually are. So negative 18 plus 1.5 would be negative 16.5, negative 15, negative 13.5, negative 12, negative 10.5, negative 9, negative 7.5, negative 6, negative 4.5, and then that would bring me back to negative 3. So, once again, if I put these nine arithmetic means in between these two numbers, it would give me an arithmetic sequence. It makes sense that our numbers are getting larger because our common difference is a positive number here. 
Okay, number three. I wanted to go through one of these um, once again because we saw one of these in our last lecture, but you didn't have any on your um, homework. So tonight we're going to have some of these on our homework. So it's asking us to find the first term and the common difference. So the problem is I don't know either of those values. So that's when we had to make this a temporary a sub 1. And once again, to figure out what term this should be, I'm going to do 17 minus 12. And I'll actually write this out. 17 minus 12 has to equal n minus 1. So 5 equals n minus 1. So that means that this is actually going to be our sixth term. So I'm going to do a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We should absolutely have this memorized by now. This time it's going to be 23 equals 8 plus 6 minus 1 times d. So 23 equals 8 plus 5d. 15 equals 5d. So 3 is our common difference. As soon as I know that that is our common difference, I'm going back to our original values. Okay, so now I'm going to do a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And we know that we've already found one of those answers. And I have some options here. For a sub n, I could either use the 12th term or the 17th term. It really doesn't matter, but I just know whatever I put here affects what I'm going to put for n. So I'm going to use 8 as my nth term, which means my n value would be 12, because 8 was the 12th term in the sequence. I also know our common difference now is 3. So I have 8 equals a sub 1 plus 11 times 3. So 8 equals a sub 1 plus 33, which tells me that negative 25 is equal to our first term. Example 4 is a good um, example, for lack of a better word, um, of what we're going to be seeing on our homework tonight, where it's going to be asking for some random things. So here it gives me the second and the seventh term, but then we need to find out what the third term is. So once again, the big problem is I do not know the common difference. So I'm going to think of this as the first term, and I know 7 minus 2 has to equal n minus 1. So I get 6 is equal to our n value, which means that this is the sixth term. So a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. I'm going to say negative 18 equals negative 3 plus 6 minus 1 times d. Negative 18 equals negative 3 plus 5d. When I add 3, I get negative 15 equals 5d. So negative 3 is our common difference. And once again, that would be logical because I can see that my seventh value is less than my second value, so it's decreasing. Now, I have a few options on what I could do at this point. Um, I could go ahead and now find the first term. Then I'd have to find the third term, okay? But what I think is easiest is just using common sense here. I know the third term comes after the second term, so I can reasonably think that the third term is the second term plus the common difference. Okay, and I'm totally fine if you guys use common sense to save some time on our test. Okay, the, the thing is most of the time we're finding numbers that are so huge that I cannot rely on common sense because I would not be able to finish my quiz or finish my test. So in this case, our third term is equal to negative 3 plus the common difference, which is negative 3. So our third term in the sequence is negative 6. The last example of this lecture is a little bit different because it's giving us terms and asking us to find x. And we have some of these on our homework, and I don't want you to be freaked out by them. So it is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So our nth term here is 2x. Our first term is x minus 2. 2x was the fifth term in our sequence, so I'm going to write 5 minus 1 
times x minus 7. So I have 2x equals x minus 2 plus 4 times x minus 7. At this point, it really is irrelevant that this is an arithmetic sequence because this is just giving me an algebraic equation to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 4, so I get 4x minus 28. So I have 2x equals 5x minus 30. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. So negative 3x equals negative 30. Lastly, I'm going to divide by negative 3, and I get x is equal to 10. Okay, so the whole purpose on this problem is just getting us to use that formula. And what you'll see on your homework tonight, our homework tonight is definitely more difficult than um, our previous homework because now we're more familiar with this equation and we're going to be using it in different applications like we saw in these examples today.